Behind me, this corner right here in our auditorium is our broadcast suite. It's really our production slash worship suite. I don't, I don't have a name for it. I built out our broadcast room basically from nothing from the sale of just one item. So I wanna take you back and show you this, but we're gonna really focus on the broadcast room and just what all we were able to do with that sale of that one item. I'm super excited about this, so come on, follow me. Does your church have a full-time graphic artist? No. Most churches don't even have a part-time graphic artist, and most churches don't even need one with resources like churchmotiongraphics.com. No matter what you're trying to create, whether it's an advertisement, sermon series art, social media posts, maybe you're just trying to find a really cool background for lyrics, you just search and find the one that you like, you can customize it to your specific needs. It's that easy, download it, put it on ProPresenter, done. Again, they have thousands of motion backgrounds, sermon and announcement templates, social media graphics, and so much more. And if you enter the coupon code WLH at checkout, you'll get $15 off your yearly premium subscription. It's seriously like having a full-time graphic artist anytime you need them. Remember, that's churchmotiongraphics.com. Back to the video. This hallway leads to our stairwell that leads to our kids area but I kind of confiscated, a, uh, it was not well, it was supposed to be a closet, but it ended up being somebody's office, our treasurer's office. Confiscated that, turned it into our broadcast room, and we cut a hole from, so this is our storage room that follows us through, and we cut a hole in the wall right here to lead us to our green room. We already had our green room over here, and we had to go through a door, like straight out into our auditorium, and that's just not, that wasn't fun. Then I was like, okay, what else can I do to make this better? So of course we spruced it up a little bit, made it look a little bit better, but then we cut a hole in this wall. Now this room is a chair room. It's just mainly for chairs, tables, breakers, some other tools and stuff like that. But the reason why I did that is so I can pass through and then go through this double doorway that we will hopefully soon have a curtain on like a nice stage curtain that we can slide back and forth or just kind of work our way through and then this leads us backstage so that way we don't have to walk beside the stage we have a portable stage it's not it's not all built in and pretty and nice we don't have walls that where we can have a backstage pass through but we're kind of creating that backstage pass through with what we're doing here let's go back to the broadcast room because that's what this video is about come on don't, no, we're not gonna start hitting that every time we go out like a football team. So don't be doing that, Jackson. <laughs> All right, so this doorway was already here, the, uh, but we never used it. We kept this door closed and locked because this was an office. It was actually a very small finance office. But we did keep our mics, as you can see, on the opposite side of this door for us because it was a storage room. Um, but we still have our mics right here. Um, and then we have the... Uh, stage manager checklist that probably needs to be updated because that says 2022 on it jackson why don't you get on that all right here's the broadcast room let's talk about it all right we made it to the broadcast room i'm going to show you all the gear that we're using to make this happen and thankfully i was gifted an item that i was able to sell to be able to fund this room and all of it went straight in straight back to the church like i don't own any of this stuff uh i was gifted an item i sold it i made just under 6,000 bucks of that. And then we had a couple other items that we were able to sell to get some of the other stuff, uh, some of the other gear that we're currently using in this room. And so for under $10,000, we were able to build a broadcast room to where we can hopefully reach hundreds, maybe thousands. And it would be really cool to, you know, reach hundreds of thousands with the gospel that's preached in this building uh, week in and week out. So. That's the purpose of live streaming or at least recording the service and putting it out uh, for people to see is to be ministered to, to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so that's what this is all about. I mean, you can do this at your church, look around, see what are the things that you're not using that you could sell and just start building uh, this kind of thing piece by piece. Um, that's sort of how we started. 
And then with the sale of that item, I was able to fund the rest and we made it happen. Now it's time to install the TV. Andre just put in some power boxes and a box for to run the HDMI through. And we have a, what's cool is we have, oh gosh, you can even see that. We have a box up here that we're gonna run to. It's taken apart right now. And we're gonna run the power from it down the wall back down here and do it the right way, I guess. He said it was the right way. Yeah. <laughs> and then later I'm going to take this and turn it into a box instead of a cable coming through the wall because that just looks terrible. Nobody likes just a hole in the wall. Let's make it into a box. I want to start with this side. This is our pro presenter side of the desk. We're using a Mac Mini M1. This was from uh, 2020. The 2020 Mac Mini M1. It's running exclusively pro presenter. And ProPresenter is feeding uh, four feeds through the deck link. So the deck link is in a StarTech chassis. We're running four feeds through that deck link. Stage display, we also have the lower thirds, as you can see in green up there. And then of course, main screen, and we have a scripture lower thirds. We're also running to our ATEM, which is our switcher, a, the secondary display from the Mac Mini. So the way I have it set up, ProPresenter is running all the main feeds to the deck link. I don't trust the computer's secondary display, but we still have that dis display available uh, as camera five, if you will. So if we did want to play a video from YouTube and we didn't download it, or, we want, or we're wanting to show something on a browser, or for some reason, God forbid, somebody needed a, um, like a, what is that called, PowerPoint, done we can run that software on that second display and then put it up on our main screen but otherwise all of our other feeds are coming from that deck link like i said uh to our state uh confidence monitors and then these other three over here um so yeah we're using ProPresenter 7 and i love ProPresenter 7 if you want to know how we set up our workflow or how we what our work ProPresenter 7 workflow is uh, i have a video i'll link that right here um on the screen but I uh, love ProPresenter 7. We're sending that over to our Atom Mini Extreme. <laughs> um, we're also running two cameras right now to the Atom Mini. I would love to add more, maybe a, a third on the drums and maybe a fourth on the other side of the stage or maybe a third in the audience or something like that. But channel three and four are cameras. As you can see, I have both cameras on right now. And then we have five is that secondary display. Six is our sermon scripture, lower third. Seven is the main feed, like the main screen feed for ProPresenter. And then eight is our lower thirds for lyrics while we are, um, while we're, you know, doing worship singing. Um, we'll talk more about the ATEM specifically and how we have that run in a second, but for audio, we're using the M32R. Uh, we're running everything from front of house it, all the channels are be, are being sent um, via, I think it's Cat5e or Cat6, one of those, uh, to this board. So we're getting all the channels, but this is a completely separate mix from front of house just for online. And this mix is getting better and better every week and as we improve um, our live stream mix. And I'm getting help from other people too. Uh, I actually know somebody that provides any help with online sound. I have a link below to a podcast I did with him. Go check that out in the link below. I think you'll be happy you did. Anyway, so that's what we're using for audio and that's being sent over to the Ada Mini as well. So it's now time to talk about that. The Ada Mini Extreme is a very popular mm, kind of prosumer budget level switcher and it, it does a lot of things within itself. Um, I did a video about it when we had it set up next to front of house, um, but I'm going to do another one doing a deep dive into this. So if you'd like to see that, subscribe, whatever. Like I was talking about with ProPresenter, we're running uh, the HDMI out uh, the side, this side here, to where we can use the Ada Mini to be able to show, to send the feed to the main screen. So the HDMI out one, I believe, is going to the main screen. And we can put, with these buttons here, we can put anything we want to on the main screen as far as like what's being ran to uh, the Ada Mini Extreme. And then, like I said, audio is also running to the Ada Mini. And we have audio going stereo 
to the mic one uh, channel. Because of the way we're running our cameras to the ATEM, we have to delay the audio by eight frames because of latency. So I love that we're able to do that and uh, just set it the way we need it to sound the best on the ATEM. It's not the best way to get sound on your live stream by any means, um, but right now that's what we're doing. And of course we can upgrade to some better systems as we go and have better sound, but, uh, but it doesn't sound bad. I will say that, but it can sound better. And then also your mix in general, like uh, we're trying to improve our mix every time just to, to make it sound better as well. But we're using another uh, Mac mini uh, M1. This is a 2020 uh, variety with, oh, check this out with the black mouse. That's what I'm talking about. It's the best thing in here. <laughs> and then uh, I found this keyboard in storage and it has a cable on it, so I don't have to charge it. Imagine that. You don't even have to charge something. You gotta charge everything nowadays. We're running a uh, um, Western Digital uh, WD, whatever, uh, hard drive. So the Ada Mini is actually recording to this hard drive. Yep. And then our comm system that we're using is the Hollyland SolidCom C1 Pro. Sorry, I had to make that like a commercial. <laughs> Jackson's laughing behind the camera. Hollyland sent me these comms to do a video about video coming soon. Uh, but if you want a good comm that you, where you don't have to have a cable, uh, check out the C1 Pro. They're really, really good. So this uh, SolidCom C1 Pro by Hollyland. Love these. Sound great. They have noise cancellation, all the above. Go check them out. Got a link below. For sound in this room, we're using some JBLs. I'll put the exact model number in the description where we have all the stuff. Um, but the, these JBL speakers sound really good, especially for this room and being this close. I mean, they are close range kind of studio grade speakers. And the stands are really cool. Um, <laughs> because you can run the cables through the middle of the stand, but guess what we're not doing? We're not running the cable through the middle of, this, of the shaft of the stand. Why? I don't know. Probably Jackson's fault, but yeah, it's, yeah, it's not, not happening. Uh, but what is cool is on the back of this desk, I built out where all the cables are nicely laid out against that wood, and I'm not being sarcastic. It looks good back there. I have a blue light back there just to give us this blue ambiance glow behind the desk. It looks really nice. And I don't know if you can see this. I'll just show it anyway, I don't care. But one of the upgrades we're gonna make is the desk itself. We're gonna get a more like uh, broadcast room quality desk one day in the future. How much time do we have left? And because this is a computer desk, uh, <laughs> it kind of, wants the bow just a little bit in the middle. So I had to put a piece of wood under there and, and support the middle of this desk. I got this desk off of Amazon and the chairs off and that's all the squeaking you're hearing. It's from the chair. Uh, so I don't know what else to do about that. We'll have to get a better chair. And I'm using a 55 inch screen TV for our multi-view. And I love the way our multi-view is set up. It's just, you know, we have our program. I mean, we try to keep things somewhat standard, I guess, if you will, but it's very simple. Once we start adding more cameras, we'll have to decide what we're gonna take off or we'll have to add another multi-view somewhere. And then we have a clock. The clock up there is off by four minutes. It's slow by four minutes. The clock's plugged in to, the, to it to power. It's not running on a battery and it's still slow by four minutes. I don't, but I like that it has the temperature. It's like 80 million degrees in here right now. And I love that it has the, uh, the month and the year on it, but, oh no, the month and the date. But I understand why it goes slow by four minutes. Um, I think it'd be interesting to see how slow it actually will go or as long as we decide to keep the clock in here. What do you think? Or should I fix it and then like every six months fix it? <laughs> now I probably should fix it. Um, now I did allude to what we use for getting the camera feed to the ATEM. It is not a hard line, we're actually using wireless transmitters, I'll show you, hold on. So we're using these Hollyland, uh, I believe these are the Mars 400S Pro, I think. These cameras are 4K, but, and we are running them 4K, but we're getting the signal 1080, and the Mini Extreme is only 1080 anyway online, so that's fine. Um, using these big old batteries, I love these batteries by the way, so if you ever use these like Sony type of batteries, um, 
these are the best. I'll try to link those below too. Uh, but I like what the Hollyland offers. Um, it, the only problem I, I have with this is that there is, well, it's eight, roughly eight frames of latency, if that means anything to you. I don't know the time of the latency. I just know how many frames it is. Um, uh, so yeah, we just make the adjustment on the ATOM software and we're good to go. Um, but yeah, we're using the, an older, not quite older, it was maybe the 2020 model of the Canon XA50. I think they're already upgrading that by now. I don't think this one's available anymore. Um, but it's a good camera for, for broadcast. I'm excited to be able to upgrade that one day in the future, but right now that's what we're using. And then we have up here, Jackson, you can actually show us. Go back there. Up here is where we have the receiver hanging. Uh, the receiver's hanging in this little window and I have it going up to the ceiling over and then down this little channel. Uh, they're like channel cable guides or whatever. We're using one on the back of the desk as well, as you probably saw in some of the B-roll. And then that's running everything to, or that's, that cable then is also plugged into the ATEM. And then everything else that's running out of this room to other places that it needs to run. So for example, uh, the, the Cat6 from, for the audio, for the boards to connect together and, and talk to each other. Uh, all, everything is running up this cable guide in the corner. I don't know if you can see this, Jackson, but up this cable guide in the corner, over across the top, and then this whole section across the ceiling, we had to redo because we took all these panels down and ran all the cables. They had to go all the way across to our front of house or wherever they go. We have to take cable and run it down this tube because it's gotta come through this wall into the sound booth. Excited? Yeah. <laughs> oh, and then it's gotta go all across here and then That's the fun part. through here and then into, into the room, which, oh wow, that's looking really rough right now. But it's gotta come through this hole, as you can see right there. So coming through this hole and going all the way across and then down the corner of the wall over there. So that way we can, when we ride it down to the corner, we can get it to the uh, soundboard. On this wall, I don't know if you can see it from this view, but I'll try to show you. These are sound panels for absorption of sound, just for talking, just because they're not the greatest sound panels, but they are on Amazon. And I did some sort of like, I don't know, just like, they're not all solid. It's like a, I stacked them differently on each other, uh, just to give it a little bit of effect. And this window, I'm very proud of this window, Jackson, because uh, because this window, what? I said I was there. Yeah, you were. Yeah, you were. This was an open window. How are we gonna have a broadcast room where we're talk, where our switcher is talking to camera people, and sound like we want to hear sound in this room? I love that we have a brick wall right here, first of all, because we hardly hear a thing outside of this room uh, from front of house. But right there through this window is our stage. And so I bought a piece of tempered glass custom to the size. I, I installed it into this window seal and it, it's been awesome. So I'm very glad we did that. That was a very, very good money, very money well spent. That's how you say it. <laughs> and then on this side, I kind of mimicked. So if you notice, this one by four is the same distance from this back wall as the one by four over there. And then this one here, right behind me, is the same distance as the other side of the window seal. And then this right here, this is a one by six. Put it all the way across for as a chair, chair rail, if I can speak. Because this room is so small, people are gonna turn and probably hit the wall. So I went ahead and did it as a chair rail, and then I extended the uh, other one by four down, just to give it a little bit of a, a design element. I'm telling you when the lights are off and just as blue light and the other screens are glowing, it looks really cool. It just, I don't know, it just has a neat look. I'm trying to think, what else in this room, Jackson? We did go with a matte black, or like a, is it matte or is it flat? We went with a flat black paint. Um, I will never go flat black paint again. I will go semi-gloss because uh, it it leaves marks everywhere. I mean, I'll, I'll do one right now just so you can see. You may not be able to see it. 
Do you see that? Just running my finger across makes a white streak, and I, I hate it. So if you're painting a room black or gray, use semi-gloss or somewhere between flat and semi-gloss, so that way you can, first of all, not have to worry about those marks, but then if, if you do get something, you can just wash it off. Um, oh, probably the last thing we'll talk about. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I am using a cheap router for this board, so that way we can... Uh, connect to this board via, via Wi-Fi. And then also I uh, have this room set up as like a network hub. Uh, so that way all of our internet in this room is is just on a switch. So like nothing's running on Wi-Fi in this room other than the board itself. And so that way, like I even have a network switch in this room over here, at the sound booth, all that stuff. So that way we have direct access to very fast internet, especially especially with Ada Mini Extreme. I have all that built out on the back side. I thought that was an important detail, but the most important detail, other than our little mirror over here, is this sign. What do you think? Phase two. I'm really excited about phase two. Let me sit down, because I'm too excited. <laughs> We're gonna split this desk apart. Actually, this desk, it's probably going in our office somewhere or somewhere else. I don't want to see this one ever again once we get to phase two. Um, we're going to do two separate desks, and that way I can have a, like a pass-through to this front section where I'll put all of our rock, rack mount devices that are associated with live stream and all the other screens that we might need in our new lobby when, that, when that's built. Um, but because I need a smart video hub, we're probably going to go to a bigger ATEM board. We're going to upgrade that system eventually, smart video hub, so we'll need some rack mount space. Then we're going to put another desk right here, turn the camera. Another desk is going to go right here, a little higher, probably a little taller. Um, and then it, we're going to have it, that's going to be for audio. So all audio will live right here and they're gonna have their own uh, close range speakers. Obviously they can use headphones if they want to, probably need to, because you know most people listen to online mix via their phone. So uh, we'll still have those speakers up there, but we'll do some smaller ones right here. All audio will live right here. And that way we'll have three separate stations with nicer desk, and we'll have to run some kind of channel either on the floor to run all the cables, like a cable channel, or up top and then drop them down or something like that. But I'm excited about phase two, just putting together the plans right now. If you have any ideas for me for phase two, put them in the comments below. I love to see what people are doing. And then I need some better mic storage and stuff like that for this room. When I get this storage room, see I had to put a pause on that storage room because I was excited about building this room out. <laughs> and so I put a pause on the development and finish finishing of that room. Uh, so when I get all that finished, I want to show you what we decide to do with like charging, mic storage, and just all the other stuff that we need to have direct access to every Sunday morning. But until then, uh, yeah, this is what we have. So this is our broadcast room currently 2023. I think it's May 2023 right now. So I'm excited to see how this develops over time and, and I'll keep you in the loop for sure. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like stuff like this, subscribe because we're gonna make more, more stuff like this. We're, we're gonna continue going to other churches and checking out their stuff behind the scenes. So yeah, come along the journey. Uh, we also have piano tutorials coming back. So go check those out. Thank you so much for watching. Remember great worship leaders are always learning. I had to learn a ton in building this room out and uh, still don't even know what I'm doing. Trees and trying to say how you feeling, but I'm gonna be the one to make it. Inshallah, God willing. Until time, I'm chilling, trying to feed my village and erase all ceilings. I live my song. I'm not opposed to praying, but it's been so long. If you in the sky and I just in my thought, with no one else around to catch me if I fall, will you take my call?